Oh, all right, everybody. 52 episodes in a row. 52. Like that, that is insane to me, really, because that's nonstop. <laughs> and this will be my last episode of the year. And I have to, I hate to tease you too much, but I've already got a lot of exciting things planned for 2024, but I need to rest. I need to recuperate. And I have crazy interviews lined up. I have lots of exciting conversations. And I just, uh, I want to focus on how I can take this to the next level in the new year. So first and foremost, before we start the show, I would like to thank you. Yes, you. You listening, you watching, wherever you are, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, wherever you are. Thank you so much for listening. I think that if you listen to this regularly, there are some people that I was their top podcast in the Spotify route, which is amazing and such an honor, is that you enjoy it for different purposes, whether it's learning about music because you, I might be talking about things that you are thinking about as well. Uh, I might put you onto things. I might expand your mind in certain ways. I've had fun exploring different ideas and I've definitely learned a lot about what resonates, what works for me, what works for you. And I want to, like I said, learn from what I can do better, what I can do faster, what I can do with more planning next year. And I, I don't have an exact time frame of when it's going to come back. As in, I'm not saying that it's like going to be mid next year. It'll be, I think most likely February, because once we're on a roll, if I've done it 52 episodes in a row, we're going to be on, on another roll. So I want to make sure I'm planned and then I'm not recording week to week. And I can do this for another great run and be another one of your favorite podcasts of the year, hopefully, if you're listening to this. Cool. I'm excited. So this episode is uh, playfully called Derex. <laughs> I am not one that does best of lists. I am not one to do top 10, top 100. I don't see the point of that because I haven't. Uh, there are some albums that I will never know about until three years later that came out this year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you about things that I've listened to that I like that I recommend for you. The Rex recommendations things that I love, things that I've particularly enjoyed, things that I think you'll find interesting, things that I have an opinion on. I've listened to plenty of albums, not enough of them that I can be like, yeah, I have to be an authority on this. So it's more like instinctual from the heart, things that I can immediately lean on and into and go, yep, I'd be happy to recommend that. So I will do that on this show. And you can walk away over this time in the new year and enjoy them and explore them and hopefully discover something new. Sound good? So the first category in Derex is My Loves, is what I'm gonna call them. The albums that I've just loved. And that's pretty simple, isn't it? So my first one is from Laura Groves, the London-based, she's a 36, 37-year-old pop singer that my friend Tom recommended to me. And he saw her and the album's called Radio Red. It's so lovely. Did you get the message? Sent it straight up to the sky. How do I explain it? I'm just going to go from the heart on this sort of stuff. It's it's almost like imagine Charlie XCX didn't discover hyperpop. <laughs> It's probably not the best reference because Charlie CS is very pop. It's just a pretty atmospheric pop record that has a lot of depth to it, a lot of heart to it. And I think because she is older for a pop star, it sits in this sort of space. It's an independently released record. It is not something that is like going to have music videos. and Or maybe the better reference is if Erica de Cassia made a, a, a pop ballad record. It's not dancey in any way. I'm just trying to find the best way to explain it to you. And it's just, it's colorful, it's rich and evocative. And I just put it on. It's so easy and so beautiful. And it has, it has Samfa on it. It has a bunch of other musicians and artists from London in that kind of scene, the Samfa S scene of, it seems like Laura Groves is someone that you just respect 
tip your hat to the industry. The musicians know who she is and respect who she is. And that's who she is. And Radio Red is a stellar pop album worth your time. The next album comes from Slauson Malone, a producer, an artist, rapper, released on Warp with the album called Excelsior. And I think it is an exploratory, experimental, hip hop, rap, dance album that is somewhat exploratory and unusual. And sometimes one song sounds like three songs at any one time. Shoulders, chips, stomach stitched, nervous face, pick up. Has smatterings from anything from from Frank Ocean to Dean Blunt. It's got a adventure to his hip hop. And I wouldn't say that it's an album that you're like, yeah, end to end, this is telling me a story. I think more it's a bit of a, a scrapbook or, or a workbook for Slosser Malone. And I would think that uh, what underpins a lot of this album is a foundation of sounds that are going to develop into something exciting in the years to come. Next is an obvious one. The Land is Inhospitable and So Are We by Mitski. I think at this point, Mitski has ascended. Mitski used to be, I think, in my personal opinion, in this box of a... In If you know Mitski and love Mitski, you know her. If you don't, it's just people don't get it. Not because it's unusual, but because it's of a... Self, it's, it's, it's quite feminine in her delivery. And I don't mean that as a criticism. And so she has ascended that to be mainstream in the best possible way. The frost, it looks like dust settled on the world after. And this album is very classically made. She made it with a producer and a lot of the artists in the room with her. It was made with a nod to the sound of like the late 50s, early 60s in terms of choirs, in terms of reverb, in terms of simplicity. There is a classic classicism to this album that I particularly love. It sounds like something that could come out in any era, really. And I think it's very timeless and romantic. And when I think about, as I've educated myself this year with this podcast, I think Mitski is someone that I think Mitski is the representative. I made a video on millennial melancholy and about artists, female artists like Lana Del Rey, Phoebe Bridges, Mitski that represent a melancholy pop folk sound. And she is at the forefront of that along with Phoebe Bridges. Bridges. I don't love Phoebe Bridges sonically personally, but I think she's an incredible songwriter, if that makes sense. I think her lyrics are incredible. And I think Mitski is that as well. They are two at the top of their game. I think I think that this album is beautiful. I would recommend it to anyone. And I don't think that it is a controversial thing to say that this is a great album. Next up is from the South Korean duo called Hypnosis Therapy with an album called Psilocybin, the uh, psychedelic. What do I like about this record? I think that it is exciting in the alternative rap space. I think it combines so many elements of electronic music, dance music, rap, trap, pop. It, it ebbs and flows. And I think that if you want to look cool and you want to put people onto things, then put this record on because it's just wavy. <laughs> so many different ways and it's colorful and it's dynamic and it's unusual. You you put on the Mitzi record, it doesn't turn heads. People might just go, oh, this is lovely. You put on hypnosis therapy, psilocybin, people will be like, what's this playing <laughs> in the background? Can someone tell me what this is? Which is uh, its own version of fun and games, I think. And it's not, I don't think it's, I, in saying that, I don't think it's particularly taxing or testing on your ears. I think it is a, experimental, but on the more palatable side of alternative rap. Next up is a Babatha. By the time this podcast is coming out, I will have, at the day that it comes out, I will be having an event at Ace Hotel Sydney. And 
Babitha is doing her DJ debut DJ set there. It turns out that we both followed each other. I didn't know. Uh, well, she followed me and I followed her back because I was a fan. And she was taught playing around, joking on her story, saying that she was learning record box and DJing. And I said, you want to DJ at my event? <laughs> so uh, there we are. But Babitha, I was drawn to the cover of her album called Brighter Side of Blue. It just feels like something straight out of the 60s, psychedelia. It's um, her uh, wolf cut blonde hair, kind of reflections around her. Just a really iconic record cover. And when I say iconic, I don't mean like one of the greatest ever. I mean like it It just looks, it's a statement. It it looks like it should be hung on a wall type thing. And I'm like, what is that? And then I press play on the album and it did not disappoint. is country pop folk, I guess. It's not country. I wouldn't say it's country, but it's got twangs of the country, I guess. And she is from um, a more regional part of New South Wales, the uh, state of where I live in, in Sydney. And it has a earthiness and I, I pick her, you know, clip this up and save it. I pick her as being someone that will be revered in the places like a Faye Webster or a Courtney Barnett, maybe even. That sort of realm is in her reach. I think she has all the capability to get there. She's small at the time recording, has two, 3,000 followers, but loads of talent. Last one, coincidentally, Australian as well. Sans Merit is a, I think they're a band. <laughs> I speak to I, I know maybe it's a person, maybe it's a guy. I speak to them on Instagram sometimes. Again, I followed them because I was a fan. They follow me back being a fan of what I do. And uh, this is there's no bias. I'm not involved in any of this stuff or anything. But I really love that album. I think maybe my lawyer sent it to me. Um, and cool lawyer, right? I would describe them as a new wave meets King Cruel meets Vaporwave type sound. She's Dusky and dirty, but cool. Uh, you know, when I say King Cruel, it's that kind of swingish, slow element, but it just has this kind of warpedness to it that I particularly enjoy. I think it's a really interesting record. I think it's it's their debut record, and I think that they have a lot more potential, but they are so, so underground. I would say of all the things I've recommended, this is the most underground. Almost like I went from most mainstream to least mainstream. I think this is just not known very much. And I think that sends merit. I don't even have the album name for you. Let me get it for you. The album was called Early Grave and it's a hand-drawn illustration of a person in a balaclava with a shotgun. Lovely. I just think it's a tremendous talent. I like seeing early work that shows tremendous talent and potential. I'm so excited for the future. I'm a fan of Sans Merit. I hope you are too. Next category, I've only got two in this category and it is reissues reissues that I particularly loved from this year. The first one is Coltrane, John Coltrane with Eric Dolphy, Evenings at the Village Gate. They reached out to me, the label reached out to me, I think Verve, which is a part of Universal, and asked me to do a sponsored post for them. And I said, no. And uh, I still talked about them anyway. <laughs> so here's the sponsored post for free. I think the story is that they found this recording almost in a public library or something like that. Crazy, some sort of archives, not just on the shelves or anything revived it and is a blast. If you want a more traditionally beboppy, modalish style jazz album, I recommend this. When I first pressed play, I thought, ugh, this is just a, you know, it's just one of those loud, brash jazz records. Oh, if you know me, you know I love Coltrane, but I love the more slow things. And so when it started, I'm like, not for me. And then it kept going and I'm like, this is amazing. So just 
try it out, you know, have it up at a certain volume, maybe while you're working, maybe when you're cleaning the house. And I really hope that you can get behind it. It just moves like a train, like Coltrane himself. It just chugs along and is a lo- whole, whole lot of fun. And live recording is always nice because, you know, you'll never play that same thing again, as they say in jazz. The second is not really a reissue, but more so uh, coming online. So I did a cup I did a video last year about a Ruichi Sakamoto song that was featuring Iggy Pop and Bootsy Collins on bass. And I'm like, you need to know about this, but hey, it's not on streaming services. Well, turns out it came on streaming services this year. So that video is now redundant. So that album is called Neo Geo and the song is called Risky with Iggy Pop and Rich Sakamoto. Of course, I'm talking about two Sakamoto albums here. And the second one is Beauty, uh, a lovely cover of a uh, shirtless Ryuchi with his face, him facing the, the heavens in a, a kind of like coppery gold type cover. And there's a song called... I don't even, I can't spell it. It's like Jabarum or something like that. I'm probably butchering that. Excellent track. More exploratory in the global sounds. It's almost like there was um, uh, some Hindi perhaps in that album. And those two coming online on streaming services in the West, I'm sure it was available in Japan, is very exciting and very much worth your time. Next up, I want to tell you about some people that I think are exciting, that I've got my eye on, that I particularly like, that I think you should check out. The first one is Baratalia. Now, I had the opportunity, or I don't know if I did, but the label offered that if I whether I wanted to interview them. I think it's, I hope I'm not getting this wrong. I think it was Matador. And I didn't really know much about them. I heard about them, but they sound like a freaking bad Italian restaurant. So I'm like, do they sound familiar or do they just sound like a bad Italian restaurant that I've been to before? Uh, and I I asked Margot, you know, um, someone similar to me on TikTok uh, that recommends music. I'm like, a bar Italia cool? Like, I don't, should I be interviewing them? And she'd seen them live and I haven't. And she's like, no, they're great. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. You need some friends like that sometimes to tell you like, what have I missed? <laughs> a bar Italia is a London-based group. I think they have an Italian member and they make experimental, no, okay, they don't make experimental. They make more art rock, I would say. And they just put out an album that I think is not their full potential. I think it is a really intriguing take on the more vintage side, maybe like early 80s style rock. And they're taking it in a place that feels 2023, which is almost a bit more punk than it is like new romantic in a sense. And Baratalia is just one that I've earmarked to keep checking out, keep keeping tabs on because I just think they have it, if that makes sense. Next up is Flying Fish, who is a shoegaze, a 15 year old shoegaze artist from Phoenix. And I was put onto this artist by a follower in my DMs. They said, have you heard of Flying Fish? They're blowing up on TikTok. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And they ended up interviewing them. So if I can't, if I can remember, I'll put it in the show notes. They sent the interview to me. And um, so it's cool that the follower got to interview Flying Fish. It's a kid, a high school kid who makes really dirty, as in like sounding, shoegaze. The album is called The Way the Night Falls. I played some of that music on my radio show, on my Patreon. Love it. It's so like in your face. And I don't mean aggressive, like hardcore or anything. It's more just like this wall of guitars. And I think they must record it all in their bedroom. And on a PC, you know, and they're they're able to just make something that's really cool and exciting. I think that record 
the way the night falls is so cool for a 15 year old jump on now invest now get on the island and and join me on the journey that is flying fish next up we have a collaboration between rappers billy wood and elucid from new york city and they are called almond hammer and make sure that you separate those two words almond hammer because there is a edm group called arm and hammer and obviously there's the brand called arm and hammer so the 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 cleaning brand so make sure you type in arm and hammer they are a alternative hip-hop group what's the difference between alternative rap and alternative hip-hop alternative hip-hop is more traditional in style sample based loop based more closely aligned with boom bap but not quite drake would call it granola but i think that they are cool they're really cool i like their look i like their sound i like their vision i think that in terms of left of center uh, new hip hop that you should be excited about. I think Armand Hammer is that. Let's go with So Yoon next. I know a lot of people in my Discord, you can find that link on, I know I've spoken about the Discord. And So Yoon is the founding and leader, founding member and leader of Say So Neon and released a very, very, very revered, respected and loved album this year that you need to check out. And even had RM on it from BTS, although RM was on a bunch of different things, wasn't he? He was on a Bombing Tiger album. He was also on, he, he released his own album, but that's not to discredit. I think that So Yoon is really pushing the boundaries of pop, of pop rock, of electronic pop, and dare I say, K-pop as well, because there is an element and shininess to what So Yoon does as well. Another one to invest in. Well, let's say in Korea a little bit longer. Silica Gel. Silica Gel is a psych pop group from Korea that I think are really cool. Their visuals, their music videos, their singles. There's just something about it. There was a group called Cody Lee, a Chinese group called Cody Lee, which I particularly loved from a few years ago. And they kind of follow that same vein of really, really saturated, quite complicated, quite almost old school uh, uh, rock music. When I say old school, I'm going to say like, and I don't want to upset anyone with aging you, but I grew up in this era too. Like imagine a version of Block Party if they also met up with the layered guitar work of Jack White, met with Todd Rudgren. <laughs> I don't know. I think that they're really interesting. I like their name. I like their sound. I like when you when you kind of look at how they carry themselves and present themselves in music. I just think it's too strong of an entity to doubt, if that makes sense. Let's go with some dance music to to end this section. I really I've been a fan of Chloe Robinson, uh, formerly known as Barely Legal, um, the DJ uh, and her partner uh, DJ ADHD. They put out a record this year, and I think that Chloe Robinson and DJ ADHD form a powerful bass duo that have really a, a strong sense of like drive in their rhythms. I think that what I liked about Chloe Robinson is that she bassy style dance music, and that's bass music they call it. Sometimes they call, it's called bass line, but I love her uh, sonic appetite, if you will, for that sort of sound. I think that she does that sort of layering really well. And then teaming up with DJ the ADHD, I think that they've put out really consistent singles together. And Chloe Robinson, she has a record label called Pretty Weird. And the artist that she's put out on that label 
it's it, like DJs love the music that Pretty Weird puts out. Trust me. When you look up like those track ID playlists that Spotify has, Chloe Robinson's Pretty Weird is all throughout everyone's playlist because it's just, it's got a bounce to it. It's got a, such a fantastic rhythm to it. It's unusual, but it's not too challenging either. So Chloe Robinson and Pretty Weird and DJ ADHD. I'm a fan. Lastly, in the dance space, I've definitely got my eye on I Had a Dream. He, he is a DJ. He used to be a curator, and I don't know if he was a lead curator or not, at Boiler Room and is now an artist. And he has been working on, I know he's been working on Skrillex's new album. Skrillex was the one that appeared at the end of his DJ set, his Boiler Room set. And I Had a Dream is similar in terms of my flavor, which is someone that is really into a more bassier side of dance music. I think he pulls a lot from his South Asian heritage in what he's doing. So bringing a lot of that rhythm in, perhaps bringing some of the, the melodies and the language into it as well. <laughs> I Had a Dream is one that I think I've just got, got my eye on. It is that time of the episode to bring you this sponsor, TurntableLab.com. The home, the source for everything in relation to audio gear, hi-fi, vinyl, and the enthusiasm that comes with that. So if you want, what, needles, cartridges, styluses, that means the same thing, basically. If you want speakers, if you want an LP, that you've been jonesing for, they have like over 100,000 records in their catalog, then you can hit up Turntable Lab. I think it's really good because it's um, accessible for anyone from beginners to me, kind of mid-tier to the, it's very serious. So please check out Turntable Lab. It is the place to go if you want an all-in-one, one place to get all your turntable needs. So head to turntablelab.com or you can go to .com forward slash Derek for a special selection of things that I love, would buy, or would recommend. Back to the episode. Let's talk about a few mainstream things to 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 finish the podcast, just to entertain you a little bit. But it's funny because uh, my kid uh, was very much into new jeans and ditto was one that settled him down when he was like in a state sometimes. So my Spotify wrapped was full of new jeans. So that's why you didn't see it online. Um, but I would say that new jeans is... Uh, EP was really good to be honest I recommended it to my sister I said this is going to be your new favorite act and she goes sure and then it turned out that it was her new, new favorite act and the top of her Spotify rap so I think I've waxed lyrical about the fact that Adore the label and the A&Rs did really well at finding an original sound in K-pop they tapped people like Kim jin Ya, they tap people like Erica de Cassia and Smurz to work on this album or EP rather and made a very it's it's not like it's a UK centric or Eurocentric record it's not like they it's still K-pop but they got people outside of the world to make K-pop and made something completely different and I think from end to end that EP is a really good really good K-pop record I did a podcast called In Defense of Drake and I thought the Drake album was fine. I think it is added to the pile in a sense of Drake albums. I think that I, the whole Drake uh, discussion or debate that has revolved around him said to me that people kind of hate Drake quite a bit. And I've talked about that quite a bit on this podcast and people talk about his albums being too long and him needing to talk about his age, things that are more relevant to his age. I just, I've concluded that I listened to that Drake album three, four times to get a sense of it. I think you come back to it in a couple years time and then you're like, oh, I didn't know about that song. I didn't really vibe with that song now, but now I, I like it. And you kind of just keep collecting songs from Drake. You keep enjoying them for different reasons. So I'm just going to say that I thought the album was fine. And that I'm going to, I look forward to discovering more of the music. And I know that that's a really nice place to be as a music fan. It's like, I can't wait to discover what I didn't discover previously from Drake. I think that's an ideal place to be for me. He released six more tracks as part of it, like two weeks later. And those were more traditional Drake, more in the boom bap style beats, more him in his emotional 
uh, stream of consciousness raps and people are like, this is what I missed. Why doesn't he do that? It's like, he doesn't do that because he's done that for his entire career. So if you just wanted to keep doing it, then you do not care about him trying to express himself as an artist. So it, they, they were great. I enjoyed them too, but it's also like, you know me, I like to see people progress and push themselves into new sounds. So it's like, they were great, but they're also obvious. And I tr I do think that Drake tries to not be obvious and much to the chagrin of many people. I thought that Travis Scott's Utopia, uh, I have a gut feeling it's going to age well. I loved... I don't think Travis Scott has made a bad album, whether it's Rodeo, whether it's Astro World, whether it's uh, Birds in the Trap. I think that following up from Astro World is impossible in terms of culturally what that meant at the time. I think it will age well because it's not as good as Astro World. I think it has good songs. It has some deep cuts. And I think similar to Drake, I think people will appreciate it more over time. I don't think it's going to win any awards this year. I don't think it's something that people will be like, this is a great, great, great album. So I'm sure like if you were to compare it to other albums that came out this year, there are better albums that you could look at and go, these are like the standout hip hop albums of the year. And that's not one of them. But if you look back in five years time, Maybe it will be. Let's think in the future, guys. Let's think far ahead. Um, and lastly, I thought that the Pink Tape by Lil Uzi Vert was fantastic. Did I have I listened to it a lot? No, but it just brought such a smile to my face. I think it is, it is what Lil Uzi does, which is pushing boundaries, having fun, surprising people with the collaborations, with the samples, with the bravery. But it's almost not bravery at this point for Uzi because it's just so expected. And I just remember listening to it and I, there's not many experiences these days where I listen to an album and I just feel excited, happy, inspired, motivated by music. And Uzi Vert did that because it's such a thrill because you don't know what you're going to get next. You might be getting a Limp Biscuit sample. You might be getting a System of a Down sample. You might be getting Playboy Cardi type beats and it's all in the same song. And you need that. And I think that to conclude in all of this, hopefully I'll put you on some things. Hopefully you've written some things down and you add to your list to listen to. If you can get a sense about me, I, uh, I don't necessarily think about music in terms of now. I don't think about it in terms of, is it the best? Is it the greatest? How has this been the top five? I don't care about that. What I care about is artists that are doing something that's really beautiful. Artists that are doing something that pushes themselves, pushes the genre, they're having fun. They don't have to make things that are progressive, but I think that there has to be some sort of heart in what they're doing to create something that they feel is wholly original. And so I think for a lot of music that I listen to, I'm like, it's fine, good for them. It's a nice song uh, and I can listen to, like who knows? I have I haven't. I'm not going to listen to like the uh, the Pitchfork top songs of the year or whatever. Like if everyone's opinions on that is different, I look for the artists that have a complete sound, vision, brand, aesthetic, clear trajectory of how they are trying to exist in the world. And when I can find them at a particular moment in their journey, I really enjoy it. And that might not even be because their music is like bang on perfect. It's more like, I can hear where you're trying to go. I hear what you're trying to say and I'm here for the ride. And I think that perhaps if you're listening to this podcast and perhaps if you make it all the way to the end, that's why you listen to this because it's not about who freaking cares about if it's the best of whatever. I just, I'm excited to see where certain things go. I'm excited to see where certain genres go, certain artists go and where they can take it even further because that makes me excited about music. So those are my Derek's of the year. Hope you have a good holiday season. Keep an eye on my socials, whether it's Instagram or TikTok. You will know when the podcast comes back and you will know that it's going to be great because I, you know me, I put a lot of work into the things I do and I want you to be excited by what comes next. So thank you so much for listening to this. It feels like I'm speaking to friends when I do this and um, I appreciate your support and much love and I'll see you soon enough. Bye.